Hello, everybody. This is Isaac from Steam Thinkers, and we are live yet again. You know, when we first started these live, uh, these live videos, they were kind of weird for me because I'm not a real on-camera live person, but now I'm starting to get used to it. And uh, so here we are. Um, today we're going to be talking about maker spaces and how you can create one in your own home so your kids don't destroy all your stuff. How many of you have stuff or kids that just seem to go around destroying everything? I do. I mean, we have our kids do chores at least once a day and are finding that they need to do chores like three, four times a day sometimes because they just go around the house destroying everything. Well, a makerspace is a great way to keep them occupied in an organized manner that will get them that will help to keep them from destroying the stuff that you don't want destroyed. So, last week we talked about the tools of a makerspace, tools being things like scissors and rulers and hole punches and intergalactic missiles. Okay, just kidding. But we talked about all sorts of different tools that are important for an at-home makerspace. And this week, we're talking about the materials, the different things, the, what, what I like to call the consumables, those things that you will use and as part of the create or that your kids will use as part of the creations that they are making. So a makerspace is such a fun way to go. We've got one in our home and our kids just love it. They are continually creating and building inventive things. And the best part about it is that maker spaces help the kids to learn valuable skills. So for example, I have a um, nine-year-old daughter who loves building and doing all things maker space. So she's always inventing things and making, um, she makes, she loves to make decorations and crafts and, and all sorts of things, right? And she's got this big bin of stuff that she can draw from to, to make her stuff. Well, her sister had these shoes that were broken. And so she went into her maker box, got out some materials and fixed her sister's shoe. It was pretty amazing. And that shoe lasted for quite a while, um, we went on this river trip and she fixed this shoe so that it lasted through most of the river trip and got beat up pretty badly. But so the value of a makerspace is kids learn a lot of practical, a lot of practical skills. So without further ado, what should you put in a makerspace? I mean, if your kids are going to be creating and inventing and coming up with all sorts of cool creations, what should we, sh what should the kids put in a makerspace? Well, as I said last week, we talked about the tools. Today, we are going to be talking about the materials. Now, I have a sweet little checklist right here. Um, we will link to, we will link a pay put a link on the in the comments to where you can get our checklist of the things that you should put in a makerspace. So look in the comments and you will see that. Um, but I am gonna go through piece by piece and kind of show you what sort of things can go in a makerspace. So first off, I'm gonna start with one of my favorite things, cardboard. And cardboard um, is free. We keep all Amazon bot or any boxes for that matter that we buy stuff in and we cut it up into chunks just like this and then the kids build stuff out of them. Okay. My second favorite thing are the popsicle sticks or I'm sorry, the crafting sticks. <laughs> when, I, when I grew up, we always called them popsicle sticks, but now I guess the correct terminology is crafting sticks. Okay. So these are... They come in different sizes. This is the small size, but you can also get them in uh, much larger sizes. We have the from the small all the way up to the, the what they call the tongue depressor size, um, which I don't have any right here. I've got some in my maker box. But so next thing we have are index cards. These are tough little papers that can be used on a that can be used in a variety of circumstances to um, build different things, okay? And I have two different sizes. I have three by fives and I have, I believe these are four by sixes. 
Okay, so there's different sizes of that. Then I have these foam sheets. I love these foam sheets. They're great for putting cool decorations on things, but they're also really valuable for making fins for arrows or rockets or padding if you want to do like an egg drop challenge, something like that. So, um, and you can find these at the dollar store for pretty cheap. I got a big pack of these for like a buck at a, at a local dollar store. Okay. Next thing is construction paper. This one's pretty obvious. Kids love construction paper. So we will go through construction paper like crazy. Okay. Next thing, this one, a lot of, not a lot of people think about, but are super valuable that we love are corks from wine bottles or from different things. We just got um, a, a, whole a whole bag of these used for under a dollar at this crafting, at, the, at a local crafting store. And they're great to, to, to build with because you can easily cut and carve them. And, um, and they do lots of things, lots of applications for these things. Next, um, I'm gonna show you um, a few things now that you can collect around the home that won't cost anything. Number one being toilet paper or paper tube rolls like this one right here. Um, this one is, um, yeah, these guys, they're easy to find. They're cheap. Well, they're free because you just, you just salvage them from whatever you're using. And they make all sorts of things from cannons to towers to legs of robots. They're really valuable. So whenever we use paper towels, we always keep we always keep the cardboard tubes and such, okay? Next, we don't throw away hardly any plastic bottles. So this is an old ketchup bottle. These make great race cars. If you've got some wheels or you build some wheels, they can um, make awesome cars. Then any sort of pill bottles, I love pill bottles. Take them, um, take off the label, wash them out so that they don't have any residue. And then they make great for parachutes. I will drill a hole and attach a parachute to it. And then you can fill it with weight and toss it up into the air. And they make great parachutes. And any sort of used plastic container, especially containers with lids, have a ton of applications and can make bodies of robots or all sorts of things. As, as, as far as the, as the human imagination can, can come up with. Okay, next is party balloons or just regular balloons. I, I call them party balloons because balloons are for parties, but balloons are really valuable in so many ways. Um, so I always have at least a bag of balloons within a kit, within a makerspace. Um, straws. Straws are one of the most useful things you can have because you can make um, bionic, you know, you can make um, arms or hands that, um, I'm sorry, I'm bionic, mechanical hands. <laughs> you can make mechanical hands with them. You can make axles for cars. You can um, make structures, bridges, all sorts of things out of straws. Really valuable. Okay. And rubber bands. Rubber bands obviously can help keep things together. They can provide propulsion for rubber band driven cars or to wind up things like wheels or propellers for airplanes. Really cool to have rubber bands in your makerspace. Okay, finally, my last two things that I, the last two things that I wanna talk about today, number one is string. I only brought one as an example. This is a sort of masonry line. Um, but it's a it's just a white one. Normally, masonry line is is it has quite different colors to it. Um, but this is similar to a masonry line. But you can get them in all different. I would have different weights. So this one's pretty strong and is great for tying bigger things. But you can also get like kite string for smaller applications. So just have a variety of sizes in there. Even throw in a couple lengths of rope into your makerspace and the kids will go crazy go nuts. Okay, and finally, tape. Now tape, 
I usually have four types of tape in any makerspace. I have scotch tape, which works really well on paper. Works great for taping paper together. Then I've got masking tape, which is a pretty good, useful all around tape. Um, then I've got the super strong duct tape. And this one you, you can use for just about anything, but it doesn't work well in smaller applications. So I like duct tape for bigger things and electrical tape, which I lost my electrical tape. I think it rolled off the table and under the and under my bed or something. So um, there you go. There, those are some things. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing. I forgot the paper clips. I love paper clips in maker spaces because paper clips are nothing more than bent wire. And as you can think about it, there are a thousand applications that you can use or so many things you can do with paper clips. And the kids, my daughters will use a lot of paper clips in bending them into different shapes to do different things. So don't forget the paper clips, okay? So those are, that is my basic set of make stuff that goes in a maker space. And as I mentioned, you can find this all these things on this list, the beginning, the beginner kit for every child's makerspace. And we have print, we have put the printable checklist on uh, the link to the printable checklist in the comments. So make sure to check that out so that you can download it. So you don't have to remember all the things that I've talked about and you don't have to take notes of all these things. You have a nice little checklist. In addition on that checklist, there are some more advanced checklists like an electronics checklist and an advanced checklist for makerspaces. So check out that page, download the PDF of this makerspace printable and build a build a makerspace for your kids so that they don't destroy the, the things that you hold most valuable, but they will learn creativity, critical thinking, and those fine motor skills that are so important that in many in, that in many instances, especially these days, are getting skipped. Um, so thanks for watching. This is Isaac Ashby from Steam Thinkers, and um, oh, and a plug for next week. Next week we will be talking about how to handle failure, how to teach your kids to handle failure when their projects or their inventions don't go as planned. So we'll be talking about that and giving you some tools and resources, how you can work with your kids on that. So thanks for watching this video. My name's Isaac and we will talk to you later. Bye guys.